Be my protector, O oh God, a mighty stronghold to save me. For you are my rock, my stronghold. Lead me, guide me, for the sake of your name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning and welcome as we celebrate the sixth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Let us prepare to celebrate this Mass as we acknowledge our sins and ask for God's mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal our every illness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you have the power to make us clean. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the goodness that fill us, who fills us with joy, the joy of salvation. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us from our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the, in the highest, highest, and, and on, on earth, earth peace to people, people of goodwill. goodwill. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, you, we give you thanks for your great glory. glory. Lord God, God, Heavenly King, King O God, God Almighty Father, Father Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, only begotten Son, Son. Lord God, Lord God Lamb of God, God, Son of the Father, you, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Leviticus. <clears throat> the Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if someone has on his skin a scab or pustule or blotch, which appears to be leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron, the priest, or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean, since he is, in fact, unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you fill me with the joy of salvation. I turn to you, Lord, in time of trouble, and you will fill me with the joy of salvation. <clears throat> Blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. I turn, I turn to, to you, Lord, Lord in, in time, time of trouble, trouble and, and you will fill me with, with the joy, joy of salvation. salvation. Then I acknowledged my sin to you, my guilt I covered not. I said, I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. I, I turn, turn to you, Lord, in time, time of trouble, and, and you fill me with, with the joy of salvation. of salvation. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you just. Exalt, all you upright of heart. I, I turn, turn to you, Lord, in time, time of trouble, trouble and you and fill me with the joy of salvation. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or the Church of God, just as I try to please everyone in every way, not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. A great prophet has arisen in our midst. God has visited his people. Alleluia. 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 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him and said to him, I do will it be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately and he was made clean. Then warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once. He said to him, see that you tell no one anything, but go show yourself to the priest and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed, that will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so that it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So my friends, we all know the value of human touch and how often we long for that very gift. We also know that it's troubling if we are deprived of loving, warm, nurturing human touch. Throughout our lives, touch is vital for our existence. Whether the touch of a hug at special moments or even the gentle pat on the arm by a friend, or the feel of the soft, warm fur of a pet that I remember when dogs were part of my household. We all need touch. It's that that we ask friends. When, isn't that what we ask friends when, who move away to make sure that they stay in touch? Remember in last Sunday's gospel, Jesus took the hand of Simon's mother-in-law and who was ill and she was healed. Today, we heard the encounter between Jesus and a man suffering from leprosy. It was a dreaded disease in the ancient world. It would manifest itself first on the skin and it could cause even deformation and death. Today, the church gives us a few verses from the Old Testament book of Leviticus, which give the basic laws governing a person suspected to have leprosy. The person would be exiled from the community as it was believed to be a very contagious disease. The physical illness led to social isolation. It was also considered to be a sign of God's specific displeasure, a punishment for sins. So physically, socially, and religiously, lepers were the untouchables of their day. It was a temple priest who pronounced judgment if a person was clean or unclean. Unless we consider ourselves too far removed from, the ancient, from that ancient perspective, in the 19th century, leprosy still inspired panic in society. And the common remedy was forced isolation into a leper colony until death. You may remember stories about Father Damien, who shocked many when he voluntarily entered just such a leper colony on the Hawaiian island of Molokai to live among, the min live among and minister to these outcasts. Eventually, he contracted the disease and died in the midst of his beloved community. As physically difficult as it must have been for people suffering with leprosy in Jesus' day and today, how depressing it must have felt to be separated from all the people and places that bring warmth and comfort to life so hard to be forced into a lifetime of isolated confinement just because of an illness. Today's gospel shared the powerful story of a leper who dared to approach Jesus himself to fall at his feet and beg for healing. As we know, Jesus did not scold him or send him back into the isolation. He did what was considered to be unthinkable. He reached out his hand and touched the man what a surprise that must have been. Jesus, maybe Jesus touched him because in so doing, the leper could at least see that Jesus was not afraid of the disease and he experienced that Jesus was healing him of his illness and his isolation. More than a powerful word he could have spoken from a distance to heal the man, he made a significant point in actually touching him. When the man approached Jesus, he made a profound act of faith in not only asking to be healed, 
but by also saying, if you will, you can make me clean. He recognized that Jesus had the power to cure him, to make him clean. Jesus was obviously moved with pity at the man's suffering to heal him. And Mark said that with Jesus' word, the man was immediately made clean. Again, it relates the dynamism of Jesus' ministry, that word immediately, but also his power. It didn't take a long period of time to heal him. He did so instantly because he had com complete power over sickness and suffering. Following the law, Jesus then sent the man to the priest who could affirm that he was healed and then to go home back to the very people who had shunned him. We can well imagine that everywhere that man went after his encounter with Jesus, with every handshake or hug, in every conversation with family, friends, and strangers, the miracle of this healing was remembered. He really was the living reminder that God intends to stay in touch with all of us and wants to do the same with each other especially with those who are wounded or lonely. It's easy to see how isolating it was for a person with leprosy. Perhaps many of us can identify with such isolation because of an illness or injury, a disability in our body, mind, or spirit. Certainly in our recent times, the reality of the COVID pandemic had a powerful impact on our lives, creating deep feelings of isolation for many people. When Jesus touched the untouchable leper, he teaches us that we are not to shun anyone because of a fixed physical sickness or some deformity or abnorm abnormality, which is something people do. We are also to know that absolutely no one is permanently outcast from God, that no disease or human experience is greater than God's ability to heal and redeem. Of course, we take precautions when necessary, but Jesus teaches us to love those who are ill and not to be afraid to reach out and touch them when possible. Today, is there a particular need for healing in your life, whether physical, spiritual, emotional? If so, have the faith of the leper to say to Jesus, I need you to cleanse me, to heal me, and trust that God's healing may be for a physical need or it may be a healing of the heart and soul to enable you to know that you are not alone. I believe in one God, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Blessed Mary and, and became man. He was born with uh, the goodness of life and goodness, crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My friends, proclaiming our mission and call to love as God loves, we offer the needs of our world. For Pope Francis, our Bishop Donald, and all ministers of the Lord, may they proclaim the gospel of compassion and welcome during the upcoming Lenten season that it may be a sacred time of conversion for all. 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who have the responsibility of governance will work towards finding ways to unite rather than divide. Provide true justice tempered by mercy and recognize the equality and dignity of all human life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all married couples and couples preparing for marriage, that through the intercess intercession of St. Valentine, God will continue to bless them as they respond to his call to share his merciful love with each other. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are burdened with any type of physical, mental, or spiritual affliction, that the good and loving Lord will give them the strength and faith to recognize such challenges as opportunities to grow in faith and trust. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Clarence and Evelyn Straka, the intention of this Mass, and all the faithful departed may rest in the peace of Christ and the eternal life promised them in their baptism. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our personal intentions, known to God, that we offer them in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Jesus, our healer, give us the courage to approach you when we feel we have nothing to offer you. Lift us up so that we may again rejoice and praise your goodness, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of my sins. Thanks, Patrick. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As an exaltation, we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We, we proclaim your, your death, O Lord, Lord and, and profess your, your resurrection, resurrection until you come, come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Donald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the, the goodness of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At our Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, our Father who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer to those near to us the sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you, Pat. Thank you. Peace be with you, Patrick. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am I'm not, not worthy, worthy that you should, should enter, enter under, under my, my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that all who believe in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As our Mass has now ended, we go in Christ's peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our presider of this sixth Sunday in Winter <clears throat> Ordinary Time was Monsignor Larry Bakke, chaplain of the Apostolate for Persons with Disabilities of the Diocese of Madison. I am Pat Bowdish, a member of Pastorate 18 and attend St. John the Baptist Church in Wanakee. 
It was a privilege to be invited by Monsignor Larry to serve again as your lector and commentator this morning. The deaf and hard of hearing are able to join us in the celebration of this sacred mass by the American Sign Language Interpretation of Mary Fruits of Pastorate 23, who attends St. Dennis Church in Madison. Assisting Larry, Monsignor Larry at the altar as acolyte was her son, Patrick Fruits. The opportunity to bring the weekly television mass to persons with disabilities living in their homes or healthcare facilities is a special ministry, both public and spiritual, made possible by the owner, staff, and management of WISC-TV. We remain ever grateful for this gift of generosity. Make it a beautiful week, and may you always have the faith to turn to the Lord in times of trouble and joyously be glad in the Lord.